welcome back to this next video and uh, in this video we are going to talk about the uh, clostridium botulinum so uh, the first thing is a uh, brief introduction to the uh, clostridium botulinum this uh, clostridium botulinum uh, is a bacterium that is uh, ubiquitously found in the soil uh, and it causes a disease which is known as the uh, botulism that we will be focusing in this particular video now this uh, Clostridium botulinum, it has the ability to form the endospores and these uh, endospores, they are subterminally placed or they are located on the uh, bacterium and they are over in shape. I'll show you the images how the uh, endospore of Clostridium botulinum that actually look like when you stain them. Now the uh, Clostridium botulinum, it belongs to the genus Clostridium and the class Clostridia and the member of this genus, uh, they are known to cause food spoilage the gas gangrene, the botulinum, and the tetanus. And with the uh, focus of this video, that will be the, on the uh, botulism. Now, the Clostridium species uh, in the genus Clostridium or the class Clostridia, they are able to ferment a wide variety of organic compounds and they produce a butyric acid, the acetic acid, the butanol, and acetone, and large amount of gas, including the uh, carbon dioxide and hydrogen, is the end product during the fermentation of the sugar. Now, the uh, ability of the Clostridium species, uh, the Clostridium botulinum, for example, uh, they have the ability to produce gas under anaerobic condition, and the production of the gas is actually the reason why most canned food contaminated by the pathogen of this class, they are swollen. Now, the uh, Clostridium botulinum, it is the causative agent of the botulism, uh, and this botulism is actually a non-communicable disease and a type of food poisoning caused by the exotoxin produced by the uh, Clostridium botulinum. And we will have a detailed discussion on this, how this uh, exotoxin uh, produced by the C. botulinum is actually uh, responsible for causing the uh, botulism. Now the uh, Clostridium botulinum, it produces a very dangerous toxin, which is called is the botulinum toxin uh, under low oxygen condition. And this uh, botulinum toxin is one of the most lethal substances uh, known to the uh, mankind. Uh, and this uh, botulinum toxin actually blocks the nerve function and it can lead to uh, respiratory and muscular paralysis and ultimately death. Now the homemade canned preserved or fermented foodstuffs, they are the common sources of the food one botulism and their preparation acquired extra caution. We will be having a detailed discussion on this, uh, why the uh, homemade canes, if they are not properly uh, prepared, how they can actually lead to the uh, food one botulism. If you talk about the uh, biochemical properties or the uh, laboratory identification of Clostridium botulinum, uh, the Clostridium botulinum, they are rod shaped, uh, they are bacilli, you can see clearly in this image that they are rod shaped bacterium and they are gram positive, the purple color that is actually showing you that they are gram positive when you stain them with the uh, gram stain. Uh, the uh, Clostridium botulinum, it is a motile bacterium uh, and uh, if you uh, talk about the uh, nature of the non-motile bacteria and the motile bacteria, how they looks under the media. So if you can see over here, uh, this is an uninoculated un un tube of the media. This is a control. Uh, if the bacteria uh, that is non-motile, so it only grows uh, in the stab line. It have got a uh, sharply defined margins uh, and the surrounding medium that is very transparent and it is very much clear in this particular uh, image that the bacteria that is only growing in the stab line. If you talk about the motile bacteria that actually give you uh, a diffuse hazy growth that spread throughout the medium uh, rendering the media slightly opaque. So if you talk about the Clostridium botulinum, you may be seeing uh, a scenario like this. Uh, the um, Clostridium botulinum, they have the uh, ability to form endospores and these endospores, they are actually uh, dormant, tough and non-reproductive uh, structures and the uh, endospore formation that is usually triggered uh, by unfavorable conditions like lack of the nutrients and it usually occurs in the uh, ground positive bacteria. If you can see over here, these uh, dark spots, if you can see over here, I have magnified some of them, as I've told you at the beginning of the video, that these uh, endospores, they are located terminally in the bacteria, and you can actually see these, 
these uh, dark spots over here these are actually the endospores which are formed by the uh, clostridium botulinum the uh, clostridium botulinum they are anaerobic meaning uh, they live and grow in low oxygen conditions but they have the ability to tolerate traces of oxygen due to the enzyme uh, superoxide dismutase if you talk about the function of this superoxide dismutase it is actually an enzyme that helps break down potentially harmful oxygen molecules in the cell uh, as these uh, clostridium botulinum they are anaerobic in nature so the oxygen they may be uh, toxic to them but if they are exposed to traces of the oxygen the superoxide dismutase is actually going to uh, degrade the breakdown the traces of the oxygen thereby preventing the negative effect of the oxygen on the clostridium botulinum cells now this uh, superoxide dismutase and the production of the superoxide dismutase this is actually an important antioxidant defense in nearly all cells exposed to oxygen if the cells belong to the uh, anaerobic family so if you uh, compare the uh, uh, difference between the aerobes and the anaerobes as you can see over here if you are talking about the obligate aerobes and this is the media they'll be growing on the uh, surface of the media if you talk about the anaerobic one they will be actually growing in the bottom of the media so the, you can expect the clostridium botulinum to show you uh, a growth like this if you talk about the facultative anaerobes they actually prefer the uh, oxygen environment but they can also show a growth in the uh, anaerobic environment so if the uh, clostridium botulinum that is going to show you a uh, growth like this now the uh, clostridium botulinum uh, they are catalase negative now what i mean by catalase negative is that they do not have the ability to produce the uh, catalase enzyme and to detect the uh, ability of a bacterium the, whether they are the producer of the catalase or they are the non-producer of the catalase you have to go for the catalase test and if the uh, organism is catalase positive that is actually going to show you this uh, bubble structure when you expose them to the uh, hydrogen peroxide if they are negative you will not see any kind of this uh, bubbly structure like this so if you talk about the clostridium botulinum and if you expose the colony to the hydrogen peroxide you would be actually seeing uh, a form a structure like this now, if you talk about the uh, pathogenesis of the uh, Clostridium botulinum infection, this uh, Clostridium botulinum is actually a diverse group of the pathogenic bacteria, uh, which are grouped together by their ability to produce the botulinum toxin. So this Clostridium botulinum is actually a group, but all of these uh, members of this particular group, they have the ability to produce this uh, botulinum toxin, and this botulinum toxin is actually a neurotoxin what i mean by the neurotoxin is that they actually have effect on the uh, nervous system that you would see in a while now this uh, clostridium botulinum it is responsible for uh, three kinds of the botulism one is known as the foodborne botulism and in the foodborne botulism you are actually ingesting the preformed toxin that means that you are injecting the toxin and you are not injecting the uh, uh, bacteria or you can say that the bacteria is not responsible for causing the foodborne botulism the toxin produced by the bacteria that is actually responsible for the uh, foodborne botulism the other one is known as the infant botulism which usually affect the uh, kids below the uh, below the age of 12 months and in the infant botulism what happens is that the infants they are actually uh, having the uh, Clostridium botulinum uh, in their uh, intestine. So this is actually an intestinal infection with toxin forming uh, C. botulism. So the uh, C. botulinum itself is present in the intestine of the uh, infant and therefore it is causing the uh, infant botulism. Uh, the third type is known as the wound botulism which is actually the infection of the wound with the C. botulinum. So uh, if you compare them in these two cases the infant and the wound botulism you are actually having the C. botulism uh, present and then it is producing the toxin and in the uh, food one botulism the uh, toxin you are actually taking the preformed toxin now these uh, C botulism in this uh, produces as I've showed that they actually uh, produce the heat resistant endospores uh, that are commonly found in soil and they are able to uh, survive the adverse condition uh, 
Now this C botulinum, it, it is only able to produce the neurotoxin, this botulinum toxin during the uh, sporulation, which can only happen in uh, an anaerobic environment. If you talk about the sporulation, it is actually the formation of the spores from the vegetative cells during the uh, unfavorable environmental conditions. Now this anaerobic environment that is actually provided by the canes uh, and bulging cane foods. Uh, if you uh, know that how these canes they are formed, these canes are usually formed by providing uh, the, all of the air that has been sucked out of the cane and then you are actually having uh, an anaerobic environment in the cane. So this anaerobic environment which is provided by the canes and the uh, bulging cane foods, uh, these bulging misshapen canes, they are actually due to an internal increase in pressure uh, caused by uh, gas produced by the bacteria. I mean by this is that in the cane, you are actually providing an anaerobic environment for the growth of the spores of the Clostridium botulinum. When they grow there, they are actually producing the gas like the carbon dioxide and the um, hydrogen and that is actually the cause of the misshapen and the bulging canes. Now this neurotoxin, this botulinum toxin, this is among the most toxic and potent toxin known to the humankind. Uh, whether that is a natural toxin or a synthetic toxin and the lethal dose of this uh, neurotoxin this botulinum toxin it is about 1.3 to 2.1 nanogram per kg in human uh, this is a very low amount of the uh, toxin that is required for causing the death of the individual because 1.3 to 2.1 nanogram per kg in humans that is a very low amount that is that even microscopic amount they can cause illnesses or death in the human beings now the clostridium botulinum they actually produce eight different types of the neurotoxins as i've told you the c botulinum is actually a, a group of the organisms if you talk about them they actually produce eight different types of the neurotoxins and these eight different types of the neurotoxin they are designated by the letters a through h that we will be having the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Now, out of these eight different types of the neurotoxins, which are produced by the C botulinum, only uh, type A, B, E, F, and H. That means only five they have the ability to cause illnesses in human. Now, the type A, B, and E. They are actually associated the A, B, and E. They are actually associated with the foodborne illnesses. Uh, while the type E is especially associated with the fish products. Now the type C uh, that is produced by the Clostridium botulinum, they do not cause disease in the human but they have the ability to produce a limber neck in birds and the type D it actually causes botulism in other mammals. Now no disease uh, have yet been associated with the uh, type G neurotoxin. Now, the gold standard for determining the toxin type is a mouse bioassay. Uh, like, for example, what you will be having is that you will be having uh, a uh, monoclonal antibody, and that monoclonal antibody that will actually be uh, going to tell you which kind of the toxin is produced by which kind of the Clostridium botulinum. Uh, but the genes uh, for the type A, B, E, and F. They can now be readily differentiated using the uh, quantitative PCR. Now, when you talk about this mouse bioassay, in this mouse bioassay, you are actually using monoclonal antibodies, and these monoclonal antibodies they are very specific for the specific toxin. Uh, for example, if you are using a, a mouse bioassay and you want to detect the uh, toxin A, the botulinum toxin A, so if the uh, mouse antibody that is specific for the uh, mouse uh, for the neurotoxin A that is going to identify it. If the uh, antibody is not, it, this antibody is not going to give you identification of the B, C, D or any other type of the neurotoxin. It will be specifically interacting with a specific neurotoxin thereby giving you the information about which kind of the toxin you are dealing with. Now when you talk about this uh, neurotoxin H or this botulinum toxin H, no antitoxin to this type H is yet available and this uh, neurotoxin this type H is actually discovered in 2013 and this is by far the most deadliest. Uh, this is deadliest because when you talk about the treatment of the Clostridium botulinum, you are actually using the antitoxin. So if there is no antitoxin for the type H, that means the infection by the 
type H that will be the most deadliest because no antitoxin is available to treat it. Now these uh, toxin they are uh, resistant to degradation by the enzymes found in the gastrointestinal tract. What I mean that if you are taking the food and that is contaminated with this particular toxin, so the enzymes of the gastrointestinal tract they do not have the ability to degrade them. If they do not have the ability to degrade the uh, neurotoxin, this allow for ingestion toxin to be absorbed from the intestine into the bloodstream from where it can actually affect the uh, nervous system. Uh, the good thing is that all type of the botulinum toxin they are rapidly destroyed by heating to 100 degrees C for 15 minutes like for 900 seconds. Uh, so this is a very good thing that if you are going to heat your food before serving them for 800 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes. So if that food is uh, contaminated by the toxin that toxin will be destroyed and there will be no botulism disease caused by that particular food. Now how this toxin uh, that is produced in the food, uh, what are the conditions that are actually favoring the production of these toxin uh, in the food? Now the Clostridium botulinum spores, they are often found on the surface of the fruits and vegetables and in seafoods. So if they are in the uh, aerobic environment, that means that the spore are no more able to produce the uh, toxin. But the organism grow best under the low oxygen condition and it actually produces the spores and the toxins then. Now this toxin is most commonly formed when the food is improperly processed as I've told you if you are going to make canes at home and if you are not properly processing them you are at risk of producing the toxin and thereby causing the disease. Now this sea botulism it cannot grow below a pH of 4.6 so the acidic foods such as most fruits tomatoes and pickles they can be safely processed in a water bath cleaner because the environment provided by this kind of the food that is acidic so it do not favor the growth of the sea botulism and hence the production of the toxin is not there however foods with a higher ph like most vegetables and meats uh, they must be processed under pressure because this high ph it is, is actually uh, favoring the growth of the sea botulism and hence the, uh, pro hence the production of the toxin. So when, you, when you are dealing with these kind of the food, you must process them under pressure so as to destroy the spores of the Clostridium botulinum. Uh, and to uh, produce this pressure, you must use a pressure cooker. And this pressure cooker is going to destroy the spores and you can actually serve the food. Now the pressure cooker that will reach high enough temperature to uh, destroy the uh, spores of the Clostridium botulinum. Now for example if I give you an example of this what happens is that if a low acid food such as the green beans uh, is canned improperly uh, what I mean by that is if that is not canned under pressure or improperly canned using a pressure canner uh, the Clostridium botulinum that will be destroyed by the uh, boiling of water of food but the sea botulinum spores that will not be destroyed now the caning process will remove the oxygen from the jar thereby creating a low oxygen environment and that will allow the spores to produce the toxin How, however the toxin is sensitive to heat and it can be destroyed if the food in question is uh, boiled for 10 minutes before use if you are living at higher altitude you have to provide the uh, much higher time for example you have to boil it for like uh, 15 minutes now how this uh, clostridium botulinum it actually affects the uh, nervous system now this is what is normally happening at the uh, neuromuscular junction uh, neuromuscular junction if this is your muscles and if these are the neuron these uh, neuron are actually going to uh, release the uh, acetylcholine uh, we will uh, we will uh, continue this uh, discussion in the uh, next video and we will focus how this uh, uh, neurotoxin is actually going to uh, affect the uh, nervous system